Hello guys, Ian in London here again. Some of you will uh, know that last month I lost my Mavic down over the White Cliffs of Dover after getting to a bit of trouble as to where my drone actually was and being caught out by some of the automatic functions that kick in as the battery is getting low. Uh, as you can see, I have a replacement one and I've been uh, looking into exactly what functions do kick in and the behaviours that you can expect as the battery is going uh, is getting down to uh, low and even critical. Uh, some of the functions are, well, all of the functions are very useful. Some of them can actually catch you out and uh, lead you to make uh, more mistakes that may cost you your drone. So um, that's what I'll be doing today, a uh, shorter video. Uh, one of the other things I'll be talking about is the new Find My Drone function that DJI have introduced on their app, on the DJI Go 4 app. Um, it's useful, um, it, it will help, uh, but not always. Uh, so again, I'll go through when it will help you out and uh, when you won't be able to rely on it. So, um, kicking straight off. Mavic is actually pretty hard to lose. Like I said, it's got a number of clever functions that kick in. All of those functions though pretty much rely on uh, a couple of key points. First of all, having your home point set. So when you switch it on, power it up, you've got to listen for that little message saying that the home point has been set, check it on the map. Without that, you'll be um, in trouble. Uh, the other thing, the other key thing to make sure is that the return to home altitude is set higher than any of the trees or buildings around you. I normally have mine set to either 30 or 40 meters, it's around 120, 130 feet. Um, that should give you sufficient clearance. If you've got buildings that are taller than that, you might want to be trying to find a different place to be flying. So one of the issues I have with the DJI Go app is the number of messages that can fly up in quick succession and scroll up your quite small screen. Um, it's quite easy to miss some of the important ones. Uh, large wind velocity is quite a common message that will come up repeatedly. Um, and like I said, if you miss an important message, it can catch you out. Um, all the time you're flying, as you may know, the uh, Mavic is working out, or the app is working out, exactly how much battery you've got left versus how much effort will be required to get your Mavic back to its home point. It has to make some assumptions, so if you're flying downwind and then you've got to return to home upwind, you could be in trouble. Uh, so uh, like I said in my last video, always fly into the wind in the first part of your flight so that you're flying downwind when you're returning back. Um, anyway, at some point uh, during your flight when the um, battery is probably getting around to about 40-30%, you will get a warning and uh, the warning says the remaining battery is only enough to return to home. Return to home now. It's pretty clear, I have to say, it's good advice. You hear that message, really you should take it and return to home. Uh, around that same time though, you'll also get the low battery warning. That's a, uh, a warning level that's set. You can actually change that in the app. I think it's typically set to around uh, 40 or 30 percent. Uh, and that will simply pop up and say, you know, beware that the battery is getting low. Um, if for some reason you don't um, initiate a return to home, uh, once the battery gets down to a, a certain point and it realizes that it's only got enough power left to get your Mavic home, it will initiate a, an automatic return to home. And that is actually one of the first things that can really catch you out. Uh, if you have been, um, if you've taken on the warning and you're beginning to fly back manually, um, you'll probably be bringing it in nice and low and bringing it back towards you. As soon as that automatic return to home kicks in, it's going to raise up to the return to home altitude which, as I said, could be around 40 metres, 100 and, uh, 130 feet, um, which will take you by surprise. It certainly does take some people by surprise, and they can panic. Um, if you've got overhanging trees that you've been flying under, um, it will fly up into the branches and uh, get snarled up there. So if the automatic return to home kicks in, be ready for it to try and fly up to its return to home altitude. Don't panic unless it's going to hit something. Um, it should have enough battery power to get up there, get back to you, and then come down. 
Uh, then what happens? Uh, if for some reason you have actually overridden that, like I did down over the White Cliffs of Dover, if you're a bit scared of it uh, being buffeted by stronger winds, or, or if you have got an overhang for some reason, then you'll carry on bringing it in and eventually your battery will get down to the critical level. Now, critical battery is, uh, it defaults to I think about 10%. Again, you can actually set it in the app. Um, it's not something you kind of check that often though. So it's quite easy to forget. And at 10%, suddenly, uh, again, with very little warning, uh, the remote and the app will announce that uh, the battery has gone critical landing. Now, that again, can really catch you out. Um, especially if you're flying it over somewhere that is not suitable for landing. This is how people lose their drones in water. They believe they've got 10% uh, of their battery. It's enough for a good two or three minutes. Um, uh, they may be 100 feet out over the water, uh, doing their best to come back, and suddenly it stops and with very little warning starts uh, descending. You can override it, but uh, only half. You can push the altitude up and it will start to rise again, but the moment you let go, it will continue with its automatic descent. You can also uh, continue flying forward, but be under no illusion, it's going to do its best to try and land and you will have very little notice. It certainly does not go up to its return to home altitude. It literally just starts dropping from wherever it is. So be aware of that. And then uh, what happens next? Well, if you've managed to avoid it uh, landing and you're still doing your best to fly it back, um, eventually you're going to get down to 1% and then down to 0%. Um, it's all electronic. The moment the uh, remote uh, and the Mavic itself believes it's got 0% battery, it will shut down. And once it shuts down, that's it. There's no secret reserve power. Um, it stops flying and uh, it, it, it's, it, it's down. So that's pretty much what's going to happen uh, as you run your battery down. Now, like I also said, uh, DJI introduced the new Find My Drone function. And it's a really useful little um, addition to the app. Uh, in my other video, I explained how you can open up your flight logs and review where the data, uh, where the flight actually went, and you can find the last known position of your drone that way. But all that does is superimpose it on a map. The Find My Drone function is actually a little bit cleverer because it highlights where your drone is in relation to yourself, and it actually shows a little direct line that you should walk on, on, a, on a small map. You can actually tap the little triangle of the drone and it will open up uh, a little pop-up and you can actually initiate beeping and flashing LEDs, uh, which again is, is going to be really useful for you if it's still switched on. And this is perhaps the one thing you need to be aware of. If you've run out of battery, uh, if it's got down to zero, then the drone will have shut down. And the moment it's shut down, um, it will no longer be able to flash or bleep. Uh, the other thing it relies on is streaming the data back to the remote control. So if you've lost signal, uh, like I did when I was down over Dover, um, it will not know the true last position of the drone. So again, if it's landing, uh, but you've lost signal to your remote control, it's not going to give you an accurate location. Um, if you're aware of that, then then great. You, you, you can try and establish which direction it was flying. It was probably coming back towards you. So if it's not where it says it should be, you can just follow the line of flight and keep searching until you find it. But uh, like I said, if it's switched off, you're not going to get any bleeps. You're not going to get any flashing lights. So that outlines pretty much what will happen as your battery is running down. A lot of useful functions, but uh, they can... Uh, make your Mavic do things that you're not expecting, either suddenly rising up or uh, descending. And uh, if you're not expecting it, or you better, see, you know, if you don't know why it's happening, uh, you can panic and you can try and override it, or you can do strange things, and um, you know, you can end up uh, doing some serious damage to your Mavic or anybody that's uh, underneath. So my advice is pretty much stick to the 30%. Above that, you're going to be fine. Uh, you're going to have the odd wind velocity warning, but not a lot else. Uh, once you get below 30%, you've got multiple warnings repeatedly coming up with these, um, uh, as I said, with, with some actions that, that may surprise you. My advice really is to spend that extra 80 or 90 pounds or dollars and get yourself a second battery. Um, it's a lot cheaper than buying a new Mavic, I can assure you. And um, 
that way you're, you're never going to be pushing it you've um, you get down to 30 percent just bring it in whack in the new battery and you've got another 20 minutes of flying so hopefully you can uh, again take some things away and um, keep on flying and i will speak to you soon cheers